Good morning, this is Mr. Riley, and uh, I'm going to lecture on Chapter 10, CISD 2613. Let me take you there. Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, malware. So, Basically, malware is any software that is hostile, intrusive, annoying in its operation, performs any action or activity without the knowledge or consent of the system's owner. So basically, it's stuff someone else is inflicting on you. It has been adopted by criminals for a wide array of purposes to capture information, to steal, you know, make you pay money. It includes viruses, worms, Trojan horses, ransomware, scareware. Has evolved to steal or destroy information such as keystroke loggers. That's where they're recording your keystrokes. Uh, some of the legal acts they did to help prevent, you know, to help combat that would be the Com Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 86, any computer related offensive cracking of computer systems. The Patriot Act expands the powers of the Computer Fraud Abuse Act, and provides penalties up to 10 years for the first offense as well as payment of monetary damages. In the California State Senate Bill, one of the first laws uh, defined malware as a standalone crime. So we have our different ones, viruses, worms, spyware. Worms, coder software that spread the system by attaching itself to other files. When the file is accessed, the virus is activated. Worms, self-replicating programs that attack vulnerabilities. Surfaces spread typically with a payload to include a Trojan, rootkit, or other malware. Spyware basically spies on you, tries to gather information, and then adware to display ads, you know, pop-ups, nag screens. Scareware is basically, it's not so much a virus or anything, but it scares you into doing something. So much like the ads nowadays for the election. Uh, Trojans, that would be a, a virus or a program hidden in another program. Then rootkits are basically designed not to be found and hide themselves. And a lot of times those are used for maybe putting in a back door later or something like that. Um, what targets? Do they, they want to target your credit card data and maybe passwords? insider information if they want to steal proprietary data from another company, and any data storage, possibly a database or something like that. Viruses, it's the oldest piece of malware. It's terms frequently used to refer to all types of malware, piece of code or software that spreads systems to system by attaching itself to other files. But it has to be activated by the user. And once it's activated, it'll carry out the attack could corrupt data, destroy it. And this is the basic history of it. Uh, different types of viruses, logic bombs designed to go off at a specific date or event. Like if they quit paying Mr. Riley and a logic bomb went off. Polymorphic virus, able to change its shape to avoid antivirus programs. Multi Partite virus infects using multiple attack vectors, including boot sector, executable files. So it's it's putting itself in multiple locations. Macrovirus infects and, oper and operates through the use of a macro language, like a little script file, like with an Excel spreadsheet or w Microsoft Word. Hoaxes, not a true virus, but designed to get the attacker, get the user to take an action, even though the infection or threat no infection or threat exists, um, you know, to scare you into doing something. Uh, some of the prevention, educate your users, don't open emails you don't know about or weren't expecting, antivirus, anti-malware, and make sure you do your updates on your software and your operating system. Worms and how they function, software replicating pieces of software that combine the convenience of a computer network with the power of malware. It does not require a host. It's self-contained and doesn't require, require user intervention. It will travel on its own. 
and it can replicate itself rapidly, consumes bandwidth and resources, especially if it's using its network and it's replicating, can transmit information from the victim system, and carry a payload such as a virus. How do you stop a worm? Same thing pretty much, patch your OS. Doesn't predict against zero day exploits in which the hole can be exploited immediately. That's where they don't have they don't have the knowledge or you know they haven't known about the exploit, so they haven't patched it yet. Educate your users how to open email safely and don't respond to phishing messages. Make sure, same thing, have your firewall on, an antivirus update. Significance of Trojans types. You have remote access. That's where they can actually remote access Trojan is designed to give an attacker control over the system. Several well-known members of this class are the Sakula, KW Worm, Harvex, Dark Comet. You'll actually use the Dark Comet in one of your labs. Typically, members of this class work in two components, a client and a server. Um, security software disablers, they'll disable, you know, some Trojan attacks will disable your security software, set you up as an FTP server so they can have files transferred from you, set you up as a proxy server so they can pass traffic through you by sending data. They can actually destroy data, denial of service attacks. They can use you as like a botnet to attack other servers and stuff like that. Have your client computer attack something for them. Um, methods to get a Trojan onto your system. Well, the functions of a Trojan, data theft, you can, they'll install software, use it as, like I said, FTP server. They can delete your files. They could install a key logger so they can see your keystrokes, such as your passwords, your logons, and stuff like that. They can actually see your user screen, so they can actually see what you're doing if you have a camera and see what you're doing on your, what's on your screen. Consuming computer storage space and, or just crashing your system. How methods to get a Trojan onto a system. So basically you, you build the Trojan horse. You wrap the Trojan virus into another program so it looks legitimate. The file is retrieved and executed by the unsuspected victim. You could send them a link via email, Facebook. You know, the Trojan then typically grants access to the attacker or can do some other action on the attacker's behalf. The Trojans require instructions from the hacker before or after distribution. So once it's on your machine, it's not doing anything until the hacker says, do something for me. What are their targets? Get your financial data. Get your passwords, inside information like we talked about earlier, and any maybe data you have stored. And where can you get them from? You can get them from USB drives, bulletin boards, emails. Uh, some known symptoms symptoms of infection. They, you know, some of these are just you know irritating where your CD drawer opens and closes, your screen flips upside down. The colors change, documents start to print, your browser is redirected to a strange unknown web page. They've messed with your host file. The colors change, screensaver settings change. It goes from being a left mouse, uh, a right handed mouse to a left handed mouse. Your mouse pointer disappears. You know, there's different things they can do. You can you know, chat boxes appear on the affected screen. They, the people chatting seem to know stuff about you. Your ISP reports that the victim's computer is running port scans. So instead of them running port scans, they put a Trojan on yours and start using yours as the port scanner. Your passwords are changed. Legitimate accounts are accessed without authorization. All kinds of stuff. You start connecting to the internet by itself. Basically, pur purchases on your credit card show up. And you're... Okay, detection of Trojans and viruses. Uh, Netstat open ports. Your antivirus may find them in vulnerability scanners. 
So with the net and some common uh, the ports, if these show up, these are probably the Trojan you have running on your back in your machine. And this is an NT, NT the netstat command ran with a dash an active network connections and foreign address and it doesn't show it but it shows the ports running some of the different trojan tools let me rule recom fatbot emetis zomban beast hard disk killer crypto locker tiny banker let's have an explanation so and actually here I'm not going to read all these, but basically these are explanations of different ones and what they do. Trojan distribution method, the wrapper, what do you wrap it up in? Attackers merge intended payload with a harmless executable to create a single executable. New executables is posted in some location where it's likely to be downloaded. Example, attacker downloads authentic applications from a vendor's website uses wrappers to merge the Trojan into application and post it on the news group or other locations. And sometimes really smart hackers will, be, or, you know, really crafty ones will put it as ads and post ads all along a computer uh, website's borders and stuff, you know, just like you know, most websites are trying to generate revenue. So a Trojan construction kit, you go ahead and get one of those. An example one would be Stealth Tool or Senna Spy. And some of the back doors. Now, once you have a Trojan in there, you may want to put in a back put a back door so you can go in there later. So password cracking back door, process hiding back door. You can put root kits in there, which like to hide themselves really well. And service back door where you have you add services that are running in the background that allows you to sneak back in uh, covert communication transferring information uses a mechanism that was not designed for this purpose trusted computer systems evaluation criteria you got covert storage channels where you can you know you're, you can hide stuff within files and covert timing channels Keystroke loggers are, are typically implemented as hardware or software. So hardware would be in line with your keyboard. Software would be software. Software is installed just like any other Trojan. Example, IKS software keylogger and ghost keylogger. Hardware-based ones are plugged in to either your USB or PS2 port, and basically they're in line with the cable. Some of the different invisible ski log and key logger, these are some different softwares. Spy tech, spy agent, specter key logger, elite monitor. And a lot of these are actually, you know, you can use them out on the internet. Like, oh, what are my kids up to? Like your net nanny and stuff like that. So port redirection. Communications are redirected to ports other than their original destination. Done by setting up a piece of software to listen on a specific port. When packets are received, the traffic is sent to another system. So it redirects it to another port. Thus, they can capture your packets that way. Netcat is a, a simple command line utility available for Linux, Unix, or Windows, designed to, to function by reading information from connections using TCP or UDP and doing a simple port redirection on them as configured. So. Steps involving to use Netcat to perform port redirection. The hacker sets up a listener on his or her system, prepares the attacking uh, the attacker system to receive information from the victim system. So Netcat dash n network, verbose dash listen on port 80. The attacker executes a command on the victim system to redirect the traffic to the attacker system. So Netcat dash network. Hackers, you know, whatever the hacker's IP address, say I'm the hacker, it'd be my port IP address, 80-E, command execute. The command shell in the victim system would be at the attacker's command prompt ready for input, so I could actually put stuff in their machine. And these are some of the options for Netcat. 
dash L used for listening port. E used to redirect SD in, SD out from the program. And it, you know, there's more there. Spyware designed to collect and report information on a user's activity without the user's knowledge or consent. So it can collect your browsing habits, keystrokes, software usage, general computer usage, and more. Actually, Windows 10 does that if you don't shut it off because they want to make you a better browsing experience, they say. So how do you get it? You can get it from freeware, browser defects, physical access. Someone can actually mess with your computer if you let them in. You can from bad email attachments, you get them from social media links and stuff like that, from you know, LinkedIn, Facebook and stuff. And peer-to-peer -peer networks. So like like the PS4 and Steam. Bundling with software. So here you go. You got the CC cleaner. And what do they want to do? They want to add a desktop shortcut, add shortcut menus, add the run CC cleaner option to cycle bit. You know, so you're utterly doing, you're adding all these defaults. Add the Yahoo toolbar. And so those are actually just collecting information for Yahoo or whoever created it. Adware and scareware. Adware, software specifically designed to display ads on the user system in the form of pop-ups, nag screens, often associated with spyware. That's basically, they're just trying to like get you to buy something. Scareware is a type of malware designed to trick victims into purchasing or downloading useless or potentially dangerous software. Like your drivers are out of date. You click on here to update your drivers. That's not that's not how it works. So, ransomware designed to hold the user's data hostage, either send data to the attacker or encrypt large volumes of the files and data, and then the victim must send the ransom money to get the exchange of the decryption key. Uh, when this first came out, they would add the decryption key was already like part of it, so we figured that out and we could decrypt it without paying them any money. Now they actually have to send it to you, and they may or may not. They may say, well, that wasn't enough money. Send more. So good way around this, back up your data, keep it backed up. That way, when you, if you get ransomware, just delete it and you still have your data in the backup. Defend it against ransomware, install and maintain anti malware software, keep it up to date. Apply the latest patches for the operating system and all software. Back up your data, store it on a device not connected to a network. Restrict files from running in the data folders and don't use remote desktop. Okay, and that finishes that up. Thank you.